Hey y'all, Coach and Fire here, guys. Stay with me. Shalom. And in today's class, we're going to be talking about holy water. Holy water. Holy water. Okay. I actually thought about doing this class several years ago when it was made clear to me what holy water, what actually is, mm -hmm. where it comes from. Mm -hmm. And I never got around to it until today when I was poking around over on YouTube and heard about the first vending machine ever created. Okay. Yeah, could you imagine what the relationship between the very first vending machine and holy water? No, not at all. Yeah, they actually <laughs> had a vending machine no. to issue or distribute holy water in the churches. Oh, wow. <laughs> Put a coin in the slide and it sprinkled you out some water. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of funny, but you know, let's come on over here. Let's actually see what holy water is. Okay. So in this class, this is what we're going to do. We're going to look in the Bible and see what holy water is and what it ain't. So when we're doing a search in the King James Version for the word holy water, we see it mentioned one time in Numbers chapter 5 and verse 17. So it's only mentioned one time in the entire Bible? Um, just the phrase holy water. Okay. We're going to find out that it goes by another name here okay. in a second. But that what we see over here in Numbers chapter 5 is talking about the jealousy offering, the jealousy deal when the man is suspecting the woman of cheating on him right mm -hmm. they uh swept the floor of the temple mixed the dust in with this holy water mm -hmm. and had her to drink it right mm -hmm. apparently uh joseph and mary also drank this water mm. when they found out that's how they kind of proved that the joseph wasn't the father of the messiah mm. can't remember what book that was in but oh, yeah they huh. they drank the holy water they drank that uh water of jealousy too Right, because I guess he had some suspicion. Well, everybody, no, 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 it wasn't him. It was the Pharisees who ran the temple. Right. You know, Mary lived in the temple, mm -hmm. and so they knew all about her. Mm -hmm. And so they were scandalized when she turned up pregnant. And so they accused Joseph. They, so they made him drink it, too, mm -hmm. to prove that he wasn't a daddy. Now, I remember when I was a big fan of TBN, how they would offer um, holy water in yeah. little vials that they would send you, of course, for an offering. Yeah. And they would send you a little bit of this holy water and you are supposed to put it on yourself or one of your loved ones who was having problems. Yeah. And oh, miraculously, it would um, solve the problem. Uh, was it free? How much it cost? Uh, it was just donations. Okay. <laughs> So it wasn't quite free. Right. And that's why we bring you into this. You are the designated church lady. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, we're over here at Wikipedia and we are looking at holy water. And this goes along with what I was reading over in my Catholic dictionary. Okay. I don't know if I'd be able to find an online copy of this, but if you would go ahead and read what it says in the Catholic dictionary about holy water. Okay, holy water. Water blessed by a priest according to the form in the ritual Romanum. Okay, so this right here, this ritual Romania, it's basically the Roman ritual tells them what acts or whatever they can do. This is actually where they get exorcists from, mm. exercising people. Mm. So you kind of remember that from the movie The right. Exorcist and mm -hmm. they had holy water splashing around all over the place. Mm -hmm. Plus kind of comes out of the same document here. Mm -hmm. so but anyway, in the, in the dictionary, just like over in Wikipedia, it says that the holy water is blessed by the members of the clergy. Yeah, a priest. Yeah, so I'm a priest. Mm -hmm. So I guess I can create me some holy water. <laughs> well... And if that be the case, why don't we get us one of those super soakers and just start hosing people down with it? <laughs> but we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here. <laughs> but when you come over to YouTube, you see them actually doing something similar when they're talking about creating holy water. Mm -hmm. You know, you got the one priest there with a big pot of water and, a, and some document in his hand. 
and he's supposedly creating holy water by the gallon. How to make holy water. Yeah, how, <laughs> you just need, like I said, a super soaker mm -hmm. and just, you know, go downtown and start squirting people. So as I was preparing for this class, I went into Google and did a search for is holy water in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I clicked on this one from gotquestions.org and it talks a lot about baptism and the water of baptism being holy. But to get to what holy water is, you have to go to Numbers chapter 19. Okay. So let's go take a look at that. And when we get over to Numbers and chapter 19, we're going to find out this whole chapter is about the water of separation. Okay. Or the water of purification. Right. As we see over in the Interlinear Bible called the water of purification. This is the water that's used for purification for sin. Mm -hmm. And we see here in verse 9 how it's actually created. Okay. But let's go back to the beginning of the chapter. All right. If you don't mind, would you read for us there? Chapter 19. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord has commanded, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring thee a red heifer without spots, wherein is no blemish, and upon which never came yoke. So this is where we get the whole red heifer. You heard about the red heifer? Right. Mm -hmm. um, the Jewish community is supposedly waiting for this red heifer before they can build the temple that they, they want to build. Before it is born. Before one is born. Something like that. Apparently they had one born and all of a sudden a white spot was created on his head which threw off the plan. So now they need another one born. But it seems like I saw plenty of red cows down at the auction. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I actually, <laughs> I think maybe they need a certain shade of red. I don't know. Anyway. And ye shall give her unto Eleazar, the priest, that he may bring her forth without the camp, and one shall slay her before his face. So they're going to sacrifice this red cow. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Eleazar, the priest, shall take of her blood with his finger and sprinkle of her blood directly before the tabernacle of the congregation seven times. All right, so here's the blood of the sacrifice. And one shall burn the heifer in his sight, her skin and her flesh and her blood with her dung shall be burned. So she's going to be a whole burnt offering. Right. Okay. And the priest shall take cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet and cast it into the midst of the burning of the heifer. So here he is mixing up his holy water here. Mm -hmm. This is his recipe. He mm -hmm. has to have not only this heifer, but he needs some cedar wood, hyssop, scarlet to mix in with it. Right. Now, we got plenty of cedar wood around here, but if we were to try to make some of this holy water, I guess we have to find us some hyssop or some scarlet. And the red heifer. Uh, like I said, I saw one down at the auction. <laughs> I think my neighbor got one, too. He does have one. <laughs> As a matter of fact. Anyway, so... Then the priest shall wash his clothes, and he shall bathe his flesh in water, and afterward he shall come into the camp, and the priest shall be unclean until the eve. So here he has created this holy water. Right. You say basically a burnt offering of a cow, and then the ashes from this offering, you're going to use, you're going to mix it up with this uh, hyssop and scarlet and this wood mm -hmm. and preserve it somehow, mm -hmm. put it in a container, mm -hmm. take a bath and call it holy water or we'll call it the water of purification or water of separation. But now notice here that he is unclean, right. but it doesn't tell him to use this water of separation for his purification. Right. Yeah, so that's important, right? Because mm -hmm. even though, you know, certain things make us unclean, touching the bodies of uh, carcasses or... Uh, for a female, it would be her cycle. And even when a husband and a wife come together, if you know what I mean, that makes them unclean. Mm -hmm. But they don't need holy water right. in order to become clean again. Just regular old water because they have to take a bath mm -hmm. and waiting till sunset is all they need for that purification. Mm -hmm. So we're going to find out here what this 
water of separation is actually used for what is holy water used for so it's for a specific thing yes yeah, for a very specific thing we're okay. going to find out here all right let's go on and a man that is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer and lay them up without the camp in a clean place and it shall be kept for the congregation of the children of Israel for a water of separation. It is a purification for sin. Yeah. So this is it. You, 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 this is holy water. You know, it has nothing to do with a priest blessing this water. Like I said, could you imagine if that was actually true? Where a human could create holy water? Right. <laughs> it could be well you get weaponized something like that if you really yeah. want to and and you know of course you know you sell it you give yeah. it to those who you favor and for those you do not you know you don't give it yeah they would kind of hoard it but when you think about it since they've kind of kept this information from us we kind mm -hmm. of had to find out the hard way it's only by the grace of God and him blessing us with his word do we even know about this. Right. Otherwise, we may be reliant on the Catholic Church to tell us what holy water is. I think one of the things that, you know, is interesting to me is that it's not something that, for one, not something that we as just an ordinary person can make. And two, that it's just not something that you just sprinkle on um just like you would do um anointing oil yeah exactly it's not used like that at all matter of fact we see what it's used for right here in verse 11. and he that touches the dead body of any man shall be unclean seven days okay he shall purify himself with it on the third day and on the seventh day he shall be clean but if he purify not himself the third day then the seventh day he shall not be clean so this is the primary reason for this this water main reason for this water is in you know if we come in contact with a dead person mm -hmm. right and you know i thought about the guys working down at the mortuary do they know this and do they know that they're actually supposed to be cleansing themselves maybe they do they're they are professionals because this is very specific on the cleanliness process for after you handle a dead body so if you do not have um, used the water purification, um, do you just remain unclean or does it work as far as the time limit? You're unclean until even, even if you do not use it. So it says there that we shall be unclean for seven days. Mm -hmm. All right, read verse 12. He shall purify himself with it on the third day and on the seventh day he shall be clean. But if he purified not himself the third day, then the seventh day he shall not be clean. So here to answer your question, you're not clean at all. Right. Even after seven days, you're still mm -hmm. unclean. I mean, you even when you go through the proper cleansing process, it would take seven days before you clean again. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't appear that you become clean and maybe even ever. Right. It doesn't mention it ever. Let's, let's look at verse 13 to see if you ever become clean again once you've touched the dead body. Whosoever touches the dead body of any man that is dead and purify not himself, defileth the tabernacle of the Lord. And that soul shall be cut off from Israel because the water of separation was not sprinkled upon him. He shall be unclean. His uncleanness is yet upon him. So he cut off. Right. You don't have this water of separation. He's cut off. Right. That's a, a big deal. Do you get back in during Passover? Well, I don't know. So this would apply, say for instance, you you know you you touch your uh, uh, family member at the funeral. Yeah. You know how people just like to lay their hands yeah, on them and stuff like that, and you go about the rest of your day. And if you do not have this water of purification sprinkled on you, you are yet unclean, and that could have been years. And years That's ago. what it sounds like to me. You cut off mm -hmm. for you know maybe maybe you cut off until baptism or something like that. You, mm -hmm. you you the repentant heart has to always be accepted back. So there has to be a way back once you get to this cut off state. Mm -hmm. But I guess the purpose of this class is nobody wants to be there. Right. I guess the the main lesson is don't be touching dead bodies. Mm -hmm. And if for some reason you do. You're going to have to find somewhere some water of separation and the Catholic Church ain't it. That right. What they got down there is not holy water. Right. 
Like, I'm just curious as to what, you know, what do you do? Well, you know, will are do you ever we get required back? to find this red heifer with the hot hyssop and the and the cedar and all them other things and make it? We'll definitely want to have some on hand, mm -hmm. especially going through this tribulation, you know, mm -hmm. because those who survive this tribulation, that's one of the things we'll be required to do is to bury the people that have fallen. The birds are, of course, supposed to eat their flesh. And as far as their bones and stuff is concerned, we're supposed to leave flags behind mm -hmm. so that others, people who um, care, would actually bury these humans mm -hmm. and, you know, remove them from the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. So they would have to have this water. Mm -hmm. So and and, you know, like you said, the father did give us the recipe for it. So, you know, we can't say that he doesn't want us to make this because he has told us the I think I guess you would say the four ingredients of how to make it. Well, when you come back up to verse 19, you see that this was spoken to Moses and Aaron for them to teach the rest of us. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's not necessarily a commandment, but it's definitely a rule to be hearkened unto. Mm -hmm. It's definitely part of the Torah or. Mm -hmm. But anyway, let's let's go on. This is the law. When a man dieth in a tent, all that come into the tent and all that is in the tent shall be unclean seven days. So this is this is your house. Anybody die in your house, you're gonna be unclean. And every open vessel which hath no covering bound upon it is unclean. You gotta understand we're we're talking about diseases and stuff. Mm -hmm. They really didn't know what was going on. If somebody just died all of a sudden in your house, you, mm -hmm. you don't know why. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be something mm -hmm. contagious, you know. Mm -hmm. And whosoever touches one that is slain with a sword in the open fields or a dead body or a bone of a man or a grave shall be unclean seven days. Yeah. So he's spelling out these people here and you can imagine he's going to tell them that they're going to need this holy water. And for an unclean person, they shall take of the ashes of the burnt heifer a purification for sin and running water shall be put thereto in a vessel. Okay, so they're going to gather up this water and some other water. Mm-hmm. And a clean person shall take hyssop and dip it in the water and sprinkle it upon the tent and upon all the vessels and upon the persons that were there and upon him that touches a bone or one slain or one dead or a grave. Now, this hyssop, I guess that's what we used back at Passover, right? Right. Mm -hmm. To uh, put the blood on the doorpost. Mm -hmm. But notice again, this water is used very Specifically, yeah, for a certain purpose, for mm -hmm. a, a very certain purpose. Matter of fact, when we go into the KJV and do a search for water of separation, we see uh, Numbers chapter 19 all over the place. But the only other time the phrase water of separation is used is in Numbers chapter 31 and verse 23. Mm -hmm. But when we're in this chapter, we're talking about the time in which they went to war with the Midianites. Mm -hmm. And you see in verse 22 that it's talking about the spoil that they're actually going to get from these wars. Mm -hmm. But then read verse 23. Okay. Everything that may abide the fire, you shall make it go through the fire and it shall be clean. Nevertheless, it shall be purified with the water of separation and all that abideth not the fire, you shall make go through the water. So, like I said, these are the spoil. Of course, the gold and the silver and all of that, they would run it through the fire. Mm -hmm. But something that would burn in the fire, they washed it in the water of separation. Like clothes. Yeah, this is how they purified this stuff that they've gotten from these other other nations and right. stuff so they're mm -hmm. required to purify before they bring it into the camp but the thing is that's the only other time other than chapter 19 that we're here mentioned about this water of separation mm -hmm. so let's go back and see when else it tells us we're supposed to use it all right so let's read verse 19 and the clean persons shall sprinkle upon the unclean on the third day and on the seventh day and on the seventh day he shall purify himself and wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and shall be clean at eve. So this is important here um, because of the timing of this on the third day mm -hmm. after you've touched this dead body. Are you expected to go through this cleansing process with mm -hmm. this water? Mm -hmm. So if you miss it on the third day, I don't know. Are you going to get cut off? Like if you do it on the fourth day? Right. I don't know. What do you guys think? Y'all let us know in the comment section. We're going to go on to verse 20. 
Okay. But the man that shall be unclean and shall not purify himself, that soul shall be cut off from among the congregation, because he had devoured the sanctuary of the Lord. The water of separation had not been sprinkled upon him. He is unclean. Again, it's talking about being cut off. Right. And to me, this means being separated from our spiritual brothers. Mm -hmm. You kind of own your own out here in this world with no protections from the Elohim looking over us. Right. Mm -hmm. This also happens when we miss the feast days and stuff like that. Right. You get, you're talking about cut off. Getting cut off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But here, because on the third day, they didn't get this water of separation. They too are cut off and are unclean. Right. All right. 21. And it shall be a perpetual statue unto them that he that sprinkled the water of separation shall wash his clothes and he that touches the water of separation shall be unclean until Eve. Okay. So now after this clean person has helped these unclean people, you know, the, okay. So you have the person who touched the dead body. He has to come to the priest mm -hmm. who would, or, or it doesn't necessarily say the priest, but a clean person has to go get this water of separation, mm -hmm. come and sprinkle it over him. But now this person who has sprinkled the water on him, now they become unclean mm -hmm. and they have to be unclean until the evening, only right. until the evening. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And they have to wash their clothes right. um, to become clean again. All right. 22. And whatsoever the unclean person touches shall be unclean and the soul that touches it shall be unclean until Eve. But it should be noted that this is making them unclean and it should be noted out that he's only unclean until the evening. Right. So at sunset he becomes clean again and he's not cut off. It doesn't say anything about him being cut off. Right. So mm -hmm. we shouldn't be afraid to uh, perform this service for uh, the unclean person. We mm -hmm. shouldn't be fearful that they're going to get us cut off. Um, but yeah. this process will make us unclean for the rest of the day. And so the reason that you are unclean by handling the water of separation is is it possible because you do touch the unclean person? That's possible. And when you look in here, how anything the unclean person touches and you touch makes you unclean. Mm -hmm. So eventually, yeah, you touching. You can imagine touching doorknobs or, you know, mm -hmm. different stuff that's going on here. And then even touching the water itself, touching the, wa the, the, the holy water makes you unclean. So, mm -hmm. all right. Now, before we close this video out, let's see if we can find out a little bit more information about this so-called hyssop and this scarlet and the other ingredients used to make this holy water. Mm-hmm. Now, this hyssop seems to be really easy. It's a herb that we can buy seeds online, looks like, uh, pretty cheaply. And it grows in zones three through nine. Mm -hmm. So we can actually get us some seeds and grow some hyssop here. Yeah, we are 8B, I believe, so that will be fun. And I'm sure everybody's familiar with the cedarwood and the red heifer, but what about this scarlet? This, at first glance, seems not to be too clear as to what it is. Is mm -hmm. it a plant or is it something like that? But Stacy took it upon herself to look it up. And can you tell us what you found? Yeah, what we found out is that the scarlet is used throughout scripture in the form um, of taking on the color. So they're basically adding this red color to mm -hmm. this mixture. Right. Mm hmm and most of the times that it is used, or I said the majority of the times that it was used throughout scripture is on a piece of cloth or some type of fiber or fabric. Right, so they um, are adding some type of, it says here, scarlet thread, uh, crimson thread. Mm -hmm. And some of these translations, so they're just adding some type of redness to this mixture right mm -hmm. and i guess if it's a red thread going through the fire it's not actually going to change the color of the liquid because the yarn is going to get burnt up right mm -hmm. so what else did you find um i think one of the interest most interesting thing that i found was how all of these three items was um shown or used throughout scripture together um, starting with Exodus. You're talking about the cedar, the scarlet, and the hyssop. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so let's look at Exodus chapter 12. So this is the first time that we have mentioned the three, and we all know, or we're all very familiar with how um, the hyssop was used to be dipped into the blood and put on the doorposts. Mm-hmm. And so we find that we have these three things. We have the hyssop, mm-hmm. we have the doorpost, which is the cedar that I'm thinking, mm-hmm. and we have the scarlet, which is the blood. Yeah, they, they used uh, cedar because... The durability? Uh, yeah, we have treated wood today, but of course they didn't have a way of treating wood back then. Mm-hmm. But uh, cedar wood, yeah, it, it's um, it works just as good as treated wood, treated right. lumber. Mm-hmm. So they would have built the houses out of it and, and even the temples out of this cedar wood. So that's actually a good find. You find all three in here. Uh, the next scripture that we found it was in Leviticus. And it talks about um, the three throughout the verses in Leviticus 14, Leviticus 14 and 4, 14 and 49, 51 and 52 talks about using all three when dealing with um, lepers. Okay, so it was used to treat the lepers. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was a form of purification or cleaning them. Okay. Then we come and we find out, and this is the one we talked about throughout the lesson, is in numbers. Mm-hmm. So here we talked about how um, using the three as burning, and using the three. In the holy water. Now, in the other verses, did any of them include a red heifer or anything like that? No, only um, Numbers 19 is where it was talked about with the red heifer. Okay. And then we find that the three were used in First Kings. And that what, what is 1 Kings 4 and 33. All right. And so in 4 and 33 in 1 Kings, it says, And he spoke of trees and from the cedar tree that is in Lebanon, even unto the hyssop that springs out of the wall. He spoke also of the beasts and of the fowl and of the creeping thing and of the fishes. The only thing that I could not find was the scarlet. So it has the three, but it does not include the scarlet. So this is talking about and referring to Solomon. But he's not actually using this for purification. It seems like Solomon is just talking about it. Right, right. That is correct. You're right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then lastly, we read about it and talking about our Messiah, and that is John 19 and 29. Oh, this is when they had him on the cross. Yeah, this is when they had him on the cross, and they tried to give him vinegar that that the hyssop had been dipped in. And here we have the hyssop. We have his blood, and I looked up, but I could not uh, find a a definitive answer of what the cross would have been made of, but, you know, I would think possibly cedar. It could have been cedar, but one thing that um, jumps out at me is that he would have been the burnt offering, so he would have represented the red heifer. Right. Mm -hmm. So, good point. We've got all three of them. There, too, if if the cross, in fact, was made out of cedar wood. And I was wondering, when you tell me what you think about this, Coach, is that all three of these things had to happen before as a way of purification and cleansing of himself before he went to be with the Father. What do you say? Well, him being the burnt offering actually would have been made unclean. Okay. More than clean. Mm -hmm. But... What I believe is that now that he is this burnt offering, if his sacrifice meet all the characteristics of making this so-called holy water, then it is the products of that sacrifice that now purifies us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that brings in the question whether we yet need this holy water, which I believe we do. Y'all can chat about it in the comment section if you think it's done away with. And I'm sure somebody's going to be quick to, to say that. I'm I'm not so quick to believe that we can do away with the uh, so-called water of separation when it comes to touching these dead bodies. But I do believe that this has some type of significance and relationship to the whole process. But anyway, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, if you have anything else you can add, please put it in the comment section. Yeah. Um, 
What do you guys think about the holy water? Are you like me who was thinking at one time that, you know, you could receive a vial of holy water and use it to uh, get rid of your problems? Or if you have any experiences with it at all, please, like I said, share it in the comment section. And if you got anything out of this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. And if you enjoyed our grandbaby in the background, <laughs> give, us a, give us a thumbs up. <laughs> thumbs up for Big Drake and Shalom. Shalom.